Hi everyone, if you're a bird person, you probably love interior designing, and at least when it comes to bird cages. For me, personally, I love once in a while to kind of reorganize my bird cage to make sure that it's um, enriching and stimulating for the bird. And one of the best ways that we can add enrichment to a bird's cage is by um, adding new branches or new perches to the bird's cage. However, um, the cost of a new perch might be really expensive and it might not actually fit your bird best. So a lot of you might be surprised to find that the perch that Smokey's standing on, and I know a lot of you guys have been um, messaging me or emailing me about you know what kind of perch this is, where I got it. Um, this perch actually came com completely free. And I'm really fortunate because my dad does a lot of walking, and when he does, he brings home um, some tree branches that he thinks Smokey might be able to use. So what I do is I make sure the tree is bird safe, and um, the wood is the type that's non-toxic to parrots. Once I confirm that, I simply just wash down the branch and let it sun dry. I attach it to a base like you see here, and Smokey has a fully functional tree stand. Now, what is really beneficial about a natural tree branch as opposed to a wooden dowel is that a wooden dowel um, is really, really, really boring, to say um, the least. I mean, if you take a look at a wooden dowel, its diameter is the same throughout. There's very little variation throughout the whole dowel. Which means if the bird is perching on this for the rest of its life, which could be in excess of 65 years, um, it's going to develop eventually sores on its foot. So the benefits of providing a natural perch coming from a natural tree branch is that every diameter um, is never the same. So um, that really exercises the bird's foot and it's really healthy for their feet. Now what I'm really excited to show you is my dad actually recently brought home another branch. As you can see here, this branch is extremely large. Um, I would say even though it's really twisted and um, curvy, it measures right now about five feet um, in length. And if you guys take a look at it, at its largest point, the diameter at the largest point is about a little bit over two um, inches. At its smallest point, the diameter is about one centimeter. And like I said earlier, as opposed to a wooden dowel, a natural tree branch has varying diameters throughout the whole um, perch. And um, so no two points on this uh, branch is completely alike, and that's really healthy for the bird's foot. Originally, what I was gonna do, and I contemplated about um, either creating another tree stand like the one you guys see here, and just attaching it to a to um, a base, or whether or not I should just use this in the aviary and hang it up like this. And um, after carefully thinking about it, I think it'll be best if I just hang it up in the aviary like this. Um, some things that I really like about this branch, and I'll just talk to you guys real briefly about when I um, make a bird stand, or if you guys are to go, buy it, go out and buy a bird stand, some things that I look for is um, first, comfort. Um, natural tree branches, like I said, are really um, beneficial because they're varying in diameters throughout the whole perch. So um, that's really important. Another thing that's really important is the texture. Natural tree branches um, come with a bark, and usually the bark is really textured, so the bird gets a really firm grip on the branch. Smokes, what are you doing? Let go. Um, so a tree branch like this is really textured. Um, Smokey's able to get a really firm grip on the branch, and she doesn't slip off the branch. Um, some perches that you guys buy in the stores like Manzanita, or actually even though they do have varying diameters and even though they look really nice, they're really, really slippery because they're not really textured. So I would actually avoid using Manzanita. Um, another thing that I would look for in a perch is, um, and I, I think a lot of you guys can agree with this, is it has to be for me personally, if this is a personal preference, it has to be aesthetically pleasing. What I mean by that is, I want to be able to display a perch that's not only comfortable to the bird, but one that I'm comfortable um, having friends over and not being so embarrassed about the perch looking like a total mess. So um, both the perches that you guys see here are, in my opinion, they're really curvy, they're really twisted, it gives it a really natural, um, it looks like it got it from the jungle, maybe, and it look, just looks really, really nice and really cool. So that's what I like about these um, perches that you guys see here. But again, that last key point is just personal preference. Um, it's completely up to you what perch you guys get, as long as, again, it's a natural perch, 
it's uh, safe for the bird, and it's textured so the bird doesn't slip off the perch. So um, I think you guys have had enough of me talking for today, so why don't we go outside? Um, I'm going to take this to the aviary, I'm going to hang it up, and we'll see how Smokey likes in the aviary. Alright guys, so this is Smokey's aviary, after I place the branch in. And this is an outside view of the aviary. Obviously, she's not in there right now because um, I placed the branch in and to do so I had to take her out of the aviary. But I'll show you guys in a second um, just how she takes the new branch after I place her back inside. And here's the base of the aviary. You guys can probably see that it's lifted from the ground about, I'd say, five inches. That makes it really easy to clean because all I need to do is spray down the bottom. And after all the debris, all the um, leftover food and everything gets washed to the bottom, I just rake it every um, week. So again, convenience, it's always um, one of the priorities that I place when designing or um, buying an aviary. So if you guys built your own aviary and you're making the um, construction out of wood, just um, be aware that it might be a little bit more difficult to clean. Alright guys, so let's call Smokey to come check out her aviary. Smokes! You ready? Smokey, you want to go check it out? Let's go! Good bird! Alright guys, so um, the lens on this camera is actually pretty big. So it's going to make it kind of hard for me to squeeze it into the aviary um, with me in it to kind of show the whole view of the aviary. But I'll try my very best. He smokes, she's going to poop in a second. And um, you're a bird person. I find that people are always amazed that you can kind of predict when your bird's going to poop. It's like you can telepathically read them. Okay. Let's see if she'll go on to her um, branches up here. Now before I film this, I already kind of filled in her foraging toy. I know that in the videos it seems like um, I'm always filling up her foraging toys and it might appear like she's eating a lot of seeds, but believe it or not, she gets very little seeds and some days she gets no seeds at all. The only time where I give her seeds is when um, she's either in her aviary for a long time and I need to fill up the foraging toys or I use them for treats. And here she is now, she's come and smokes. Don't break my camera. Okay. okay, so instead of foraging, she wants a head scratch. What do you want, smokes? Let's see if she'll go on to her um, new perch. Uh, kind of hard to see. Smokes, you want to perch on there? Okay, so I know it's kind of hard to see her with the shadow going on. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. Hey, Smokes, there you go. Alright, so let me try to get it from a little bit of a different angle here. You guys can probably see that there's a lot of perches in our aviary. If you guys have a really small cage, I wouldn't recommend you stack up like a bunch of perches in your aviary or um, your cage. Just because you don't want to overcrowd your cage with a bunch of perches. 
But um, the reason why uh, I'm able to do that is one, because the aviary is really big. So that allows more room for me to kind of stack up the perches. But second, Smokey does um, get a lot of time outside every single day to fly around our living room. And because she's able to stretch her wings that way, the need for her being able to kind of fly in her aviary isn't as urgent as it would be for a bird that um, doesn't get the you doesn't get to use their wings a lot outside the cage. So again, um, you guys have a cage you're kind of remodeling. Try to put um, just a couple perches in there because you want to maximize the amount of room inside your cage. That way your bird can kind of flap its wings. But again, I only uh, um, the reason why I have a lot of perches in here is because the size of the aviary allows that to um, be possible. But also, Smokey gets time outside of her cage every day to exercise her wings. But even in this aviary, with all the perches that are in here. She can still flap her wings comfortably inside the aviary and not have a problem. Okay, so she's kind of in a funny position right here. Let me try to see if I can get it. There you go. Smokey, what are you doing? Alright guys, so um, like I said earlier, I can't stress the importance of having natural perches inside your bird's cage. It really allows your birds to um, exercise their feet, and it gives them that variation that they would get in the wild. And also, the um, natural tree bark is really textured, so it allows the birds to get a really firm grip. This is really important for birds like African greys, who can be kind of um, sensitive. There's an added bonus if you guys leave the bark. You can see here, the bird can really work to strip away that bark and not only does it exercise their feet, but equally it exercises their beak because they're chewing on the wood now. Smokes, what are you looking at? Smokey, can you wave hi to everybody? Wave? There you go, higher. Wave. Come on, wave. There you go. You want to scratch? All right. Alright guys, so one last thing I want to mention before um, I end this video. And it's actually something really important, I almost forgot to mention it, it's perch placement. When you guys are um, creating your birdcage and you're kind of remodeling and redesigning things, just be sure when you guys are placing the perches inside the cage or the aviary, you guys place them in such a way that um, they don't really overlap each other. That way you don't run the risk of the perches dropping on each other and then you have a bunch of caked up um, feces in such a bird cage that's going to be a pain to kind of scrub way off the perches. So again, um, place the perches in such a way that the places where the bird um, most often perches isn't directly over any other perches. So you guys avoid the risk of um, feces being dropped on um, perches that might lay beneath them. And finally, the last thing is um, Smokey's water bowl. Inside her cage, I keep this large giant water dish. Um, and that gives her the option of drinking, but also bathing in case she needs to. Now, I offer her a shower every week. So um, she hasn't ever taken a bath inside her water bowl. But it's there in case one day she decides that she wants to do that. 
I also really like using this water dish because since it's so large, it kind of replicates the bird's um, environment in the wild where they would have, um, with, where they would go to the water hole and kind of drink from there. Whatever you guys use, I, w I would, um, the only thing I would recommend against is I wouldn't recommend you guys use a water um, bottle. And the reason for that is because I've heard of um, several birds, but also um, dogs and other animals who have actually gone really dehydrated because the water bottle actually has a ball inside that got stuck. And if you don't pick that up early, it might seem like um, the water's still full when in fact um, it's just really stuck and the bird can't get any water out. So that could potentially be really dangerous. Alright guys, so it seems that Smokey really um, is enjoying this perch. And um, I know a lot of you guys are, are probably wondering, man this thing is huge. How is it that Smokey's not spooked by the presence of this perch? And um, that's a really good question. And um, what you don't see off the screen is um, when I actually got this perch, it came um, and it was really dirty. So I had to wash off the whole thing. And for this particular one, I actually saw a lot of potential in it because it's really twisted and it looks um, really, really nice. So I actually sanded this down. And in the whole process, sanding it down took like hours to do. But nonetheless, when I was doing this whole process, I did it near Smokey's aviary where she was staying. Um, she saw me doing the whole thing um, days afterwards. I let it dry, and I actually placed this um, closer and closer to her, um, her cage every single day. I would inch it closer and closer to her cage. So what you guys don't see off the screen is I'm actually desensitizing her to the perch every single day. Um, so my message is if you guys get like a brand new perch, and you're sticking it straight into your bird's uh, cage, they might be terrified of the perch, they'll never use it again. So it's really important that if you guys get a brand new perch, um, show it to your bird first, let your bird see it for several days, inch it closer and closer to their cage, until they can eventually touch it. Smokes, can you knock on it? Knock? There you go. Until your bird touches it um, and find that, hey, my owner's around the perch, um, they're holding it, they're playing around with it, this thing's not going to hurt me, and that's when they know that, hey, this thing's completely safe, they're not scared of it, and they're more inclined to actually use the perch. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, and you found it useful, make sure um, you guys click like below, and you also subscribe to my channel. And uh, believe it or not, that does help me a lot. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.